Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Jesse Walker, Director of Career Education here at Columbus College of Art and Design, a nonprofit art and design college that has been a creative force within Central Ohio for more than 140 years. Welcome to, day, to today's event, uh, part of the CCAD Knows Retail webinar series featuring industry leaders who share their insights about retail, the retail landscape, and what's on the horizon. Before we jump into to, uh, today's talk, uh, and I introduce our speakers, I want to share a few housekeeping notes. We are recording today's talk so we can share it on our website for those who weren't able to join us. Uh, today's event is in a webinar format and all lines are muted and videos are off uh, other than for the speakers. We will have time to answer your questions at the end. Please feel free to use the Q&A function throughout the discussion to submit your questions. You're also welcome to use the chat function throughout uh, the webinar to share any reactions or comments. Now, I'm excited to introduce today's speakers, Johanan Terrell and Rachel Friedman. Johanan is an award-winning marketing professional with over 15 years of progressive experience in all aspects of successful, traditional, non-traditional, experiential, and digital marketing and multimedia. He excels in developing and implementing impactful campaigns and strategies built for success. He is also accomplished in team building, project management, and collaborating effectively with stakeholders, vendors, and clients. A graduate of The Ohio State University, Johanan has utilized his education in psychology to apply to his, uh, to, apply to his understanding of perception and human behavior as it relates to engagement. This has translated into multiple words for innovation and impact for his work in the branding industry. Johanan has also been featured in many publications, either spotlighting his impact in his field or interviews on hot industry topics. Education and exposure are just a couple of words that describe Johanan's passion for impacting his community, in addition to running his marketing firm, Warhol and Wall Street. His latest endeavor has been founding and directing the Columbus Fashion Alliance, or CFA. The Alliance seeks to empower Columbus in being a world-renowned fashion capital and the number one place in which brands and creatives come to start and or grow their fashion-based businesses. Through local creative empowerment, convening communication between the culture and the industry and being a resource, a resource hub, CFA seeks to fill the need and intentionality Columbus needs to propel fashion forward. Also, we have Rachel. Rachel is the founder of CEO and Tenfold and Ten Space. Tenfold is a culture strategy and creative firm that builds brands through culture by leveraging what makes them truly unique and special. The company's award-winning solutions bring company culture to life through the omnichannel activation in the physical, digital, and experiential space. Ten Space is a dedicated space that leverages Tenfold's design approach to create in real life experiences for online brands. Ten Space features one brand at a time in an experiential show for two months. This revolving brick and mortar concept is completely new shop is a completely new shopping experience and acquisition platform that is changing the way consumers engage with D, uh, DTC brands. Tenfold and Ten Space solutions incorporate brand and culture strategy, environment, environmental design graphic design and interactive digital display technology to create spaces that educate, inform and inspire, connecting people to place in a meaningful way. As an entrepreneurial startup in 2014, Tenfold has quickly become an industry leading, award-winning, sorry, <laughs> award-winning firm. In 2018 and, two, and, and 2021, Tenfold received best of show honors from the American Advertising Federation. The company was also named to the prestigious Inc. 500 in 2018 and Inc. 5000 in 2019 as one of the fastest growing private companies in the nation. Rachel has also been a three-time recipient of Business First C-Suite Award from the most admired CEO. The award recognizes excellence and integrity. Tenfold brings the brand and culture story to life for clients like ESPN, NBC, Universal, BlackRock, the Columbus Crew, Big Lots, and Huntington National Bank, among many others. 
please join me in welcoming Johanan and Rachel. All right. Well, thank you for uh, for having us. Actually, I think this is going to be a great conversation. Um, I've been I've been really excited to talk to to Rachel, and I feel like no better person to kind of you know dive in with us and talk about um, you know how we show up in spaces these days. So. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We're going to uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, you know how it is. It's 2021 and we're still dealing with, you know, the on-flex technology and, and it happens. So uh, we'll uh, definitely get rocking here, but excited to, to have this conversation. And thank you for, uh, you know, having us uh, in CCAD. I love being on the, the, uh, the committee for the master's of retail uh, studies program. So this is just the beginning of a lot more uh, engaging, uh, you know, uh, content and interviews and knowledge we'll be sharing. And uh, we're gonna, you know, look forward to doing more of that. This program and even this conversation really is gonna focus on uh, where the future of space design is going and how and uh, more of the temporary spaces and those opportunities. Um, what are the essentials? What are the components? How is this industry going to grow? So I'll just say to everyone listening, everyone tuned in, to make sure you uh, think about the questions that you want to ask around, you know, um, this growing industry, and uh, especially while you have someone like Rachel here at the table to to pick yeah. up on about where she sees it going. Hey Rachel. I've moved locations. I kicked out everybody from this space who was dragging on the wireless. So I think the problem was my end. <laughs> you sound great. You sound great now. So good. 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 Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I'd just like to say thank you for joining me again. You know, um, I was just sharing how excited I am to kind of talk to you about this. Uh, we've met a couple of times and we've had a couple of conversations, and I think our conversations are really good because we kind of jam out on, you know, uh, space design and, and the role is playing and pushing it forward. So, you know, I think it's great for us to be able to share in this moment and uh, kind of, you know, dive even a little bit deeper about uh, about this area. So just uh, thank you for joining me. No, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here. For sure. All right, well, I mean, we've done our intros and our backgrounds. Uh, actually, I was just thinking about that. I probably need to redo my bio. <laughs> you know, you think every time you hear it, you're like, is it, is it on point? Oh, I might massage that later, but um, we've done that. Um, you know, you've been doing great work. Uh, just, you know, tell us a little bit on your perspective of, of, of Tenfold, you know, and, and how you started Tenfold. I would love just to give a little bit of context into you know, um, how you got into that space and, and how you, you know, come to where you are now. Yeah, so um, like probably many of you who are listening, I started my career as a designer. So I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in design from that school up north. I sort of let leave that out of the bio. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, was, was always focused really on the interiors component of design. Um, so, um, corporate workplace was really where I started my career and where I spent a, a lot of my career. Um, over the years, I ended up in a little bit more of a consultative role um, with the company that I was working for and um, working with very large Fortune 100 companies, helping them align the workplace strategy with their business strategy. And so how the work environment could become an enabler versus an obstacle to them achieving their business goals. Um, when I was working for Herman Miller, I really fell in love with business. As much as I love design, um, I really had a passion for learning about different businesses. Um, I felt like if I could learn about their business models, I could design better for them. And I was so curious because in my sort of the portfolio of clients that I was working with, there was a lot of diversity. Everything from a, a transportation and logistics company to a healthcare company to a retail company um, to a government manufacturer and contractor. So um, I was fascinated by what they were doing. And um, through that experience, I ended up deciding to go back to school um, while I was working full time and earn my MBA in marketing and strategy. And um, so what brought me to, to the creation of Tenfold was that I found that there was an opportunity 
uh, to sort of take my educational background in design and brand and strategy and marketing and sort of bring those passions together to uh, better create spaces that told the brand and culture story for clients. And at the time that I was doing that way back, you know, probably in 2006, um, it, there wasn't anything called environmental branding. Um, it really wasn't a thing or a category, but effectively that's what I was really leaning into at the time, which was really leveraging space as a medium to communicate and creating spaces that educate, that inform, and ultimately really inspire people, both employees and visitors to the space. So um, about 22 years into my career, I decided to take a leap into the world of entrepreneurship. I left my really secure um, job and uh, you know, a, a well-compensated job to um, pursue a passion to build my own company culture, um, start my own business. And so in 2014 um, is when I created Tenfold. Um, and then as my bio suggested, just recently launched a new business um, called Ten Space, which is really our step into the retail environment. And um, it's really not that much different in terms of our methodology at Tenfold or our approach. It's really finding ways to educate, inform, and inspire, you know, create that emotional connection between people and place. It's just that now we're doing it in a dedicated space um, that creates these in real life experiences for online brands. That was really dope. I always enjoy hearing uh, the backstory and, and that. So thank you for sharing that too. And I can't wait to dive in to 10 space too as well. But before, uh, before we touch on 10 space, um, you know, you mentioned something about, you know, you had already knew design, but then you went to school and you learned, you know, marketing and you learned more about the business. And I think there's a value there, right? I think sometimes when you're able to uh, work in, in different spaces and understand the, the, the intricacies or the essentials of each of those industries, you're able to bring that type of approach to the table. So I really like what you said about that too, because that's important. Yeah, I will tell you that when I interviewed for the MBA program at Fisher College of Business, so I do have degrees from both Ohio State and Michigan, I have to, you know, play one <laughs> there I can. Um, but I, you know, I had definitely had a, a bit of a, um, um, you know, of a complex around, you know, how do I make the case that they should bring this fine arts major into their MBA program? I didn't have a lot of the traditional education associated with, uh, with that area of study. And, you know, what I've learned over the years is, you know, the design education or even an arts education that you're getting, um, it's so relevant to what we're doing in business. You know, we're solving problems, we're asking good questions, we're seeking to create something that's really unique and differentiated. And so when I was learning about strategy in grad school, um, for me, that is where sort of the, the big aha moment came to me that, oh my gosh, you know, I, I am a designer, but I think at my core, at my heart, I'm strategist. Um, business strategy made so much sense, sense to me as a designer, um, and I think really fit very squarely in, you know, what I feel are, are some of my greatest gifts. And so I think that as, as a student, what you want to focus on are obviously the things that you're curious about, lean into those, um, and the things that just feel like they fit, like a glove, um, you know, lean into those as well. And you can find opportunities to combine your passions um, to really do anything. Um, but as creators, as creators, entrepreneurs are creators. That's what we're doing. We're creating something that didn't exist before. And, um, and that's, I think, probably what I like the most about creating new businesses. Yeah, that's the special part, right? That's that's the why. That's the why. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's dive into this uh, new emerging, you know, obviously the title of this this conversation is DTS, and that's really direct to space, right? And so, you know, I'm curious because I've called them pop-ups for the past few years, right? And I almost think like pop-ups doesn't serve it uh, justice, you know, because uh, pop-ups sound so pop-up sometimes sounds so, so temporary. And so like, you know, a pop-up, but it's really starting to emerge uh, stronger and stronger as a, a industry, you know, line in its own. 
Um, what what would you call it? Is, is it just pop-up design? Like, what would you call it as an expert? Yeah, like we, we sort of joke around here at Tunful that pop-up is a bad word. We don't like it. <laughs> um, and the reason we don't like it, similar to what you were saying, Yogi, is that it uh, to us, I, at least my experiences with pop-ups is that they they haven't been as inspiring as I would have hoped for them to be. And it could be because of their temporary nature. It could be because um, what facilitates them is a really sort of neutral and flexible infrastructure that doesn't feel very tailored to the brand. Um, there are obviously some great executions out there, so I don't want to diminish that. But to us, what I think the way we describe it is experiential design or experiential activation. And it's a, it's a combination of not just, so I think a lot of pop-ups just sort of feature the product. And it's like your opportunity to come in and touch and feel the merchandise, which I think is really great and important, obviously. But for us, that's just one piece of it. So we're also looking at how do we tell the brand and culture story within the space? How do we create experiences where people can engage with not just the product, but with that, with that story. Um, and that can mean literally physically engaging or just being emotionally connected through you know, copy and other experiences, layering in events. Um, so really looking at the space itself as a platform that um, really melds everything from social media to digital activation to um, events and experiences to the merchandise. That's nice. Uh, so tell me, well, I, I, and I agree with you, it is experiential design, right? And I know from experiential design, you know, there's experiential design permanent and it's like, you know, you're building it into, you know, some of the organizations that you work with. And then there's experiential design that is meant to be here for the moment, right? And I think we live in a day and age that is built out of moments, right? It's uh, we, you know, culture is shifting in this, in this way that's like, the world can grasp onto a moment, you know, quickly. And we go from like moment to moment, right? And so like, there's this, there's this interesting kind of like acceptance and almost um, people look for those moments. They look for that. They look for those experience. They, they want to, to feel that type of energy, that, that in the moment energy. So uh, uh, I've been watching the industry as it's growing, you know, Warhol and Wall Street, we do a lot of experiential uh, activation. So we've, you know, done experiential design. We just actually uh, finished uh, doing a project with, uh, with Red Bull uh, called Red Monday. And it was an experiential design as an event. Uh, it was really, really, really solid. Um, and, and uh, we work with a great team on that on that project. And um, we were talking about how, you know, nowadays people are just searching for more and more experiences and they they want their environments to kind of reflect that. And so when it comes to retail, we don't see retail going away, right? Retail is kind of shifting into this experiential design model. So uh, to lead into that, you know, what are some, because I know you talked about it, like from your perspective, you didn't see people that were really doing it the right way, right? So um, if you've seen anybody doing it the right way, what are some of the examples that you've seen out there that inspired you? Yeah, you know, I think um, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of the references that I've seen that I've found to be somewhat interesting um, tend to be in Asia, which is, I think, interesting. I don't know if brands are just more um, open to taking certain risks in some of those markets, but in, in terms of the integration of immersive technology, um, I've definitely seen that happen a lot more in, in the Asian markets. And even with brands that you know, like Coach, for example, um, is doing much more groundbreaking type of um, experiential activations in those markets than they are here in the United States. So I find that to be really interesting. Um, you know, Yogi, you and I have talked before about Canadian Goose and, um, you know, some of the, the interesting experiences they were creating to prove out that their, their, their coats were, were great in sub-zero temperatures. Um, <laughs> but even just here in Columbus on North High Street with a, a brand like Old Spice creating, you know, a, a, a barbershop environment and bringing in, you know, these world-class barbers to, to um, enable consumers to interact with their product in a completely different way and a product that many people might think, 
you know, was not going to connect with the next generation of consumers coming through. So having that right there on uh, near Ohio State's campus and um, really leaning into something that's not a moneymaker for them, but something that is a brand builder, I think is an interesting example of, of how, um, how brands are trying to think about things differently. I also, if you're familiar, if your listeners are, are familiar with, um, with the underwear brand Parade, uh, they're doing some really, really unique events across the country. They're promoting that through their social media. Um, they have a very unique point of view in terms of their look and feel of their content. So it's, it's very artistic, it's very expressive, it's very ownable to them. They push the boundaries. Um, and I think that online brands that are, are, are establishing a point of view around their aesthetic and their content, those are the ones that um, are gonna continue to win. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I've seen some people who get it wrong and I've seen some people who get it really right. And uh, I've, I'll say a couple of my favorites are there's a uh, one uh, one. There's a couple of designers that we work with here locally. Uh, Jocelyn is one of them. She's really, really dope. They call her Jossie. Um, Sayoko is one of our creative directors, too. And she's worked on projects like HBO, Absolute um, and uh, Nationally, there's a couple of uh, companies that I've seen. Um, Parasol Project, they're a, a newer starter uh, startup. They've come out of New York and they're, they're one of those companies that strictly is uh, emerging as a quote, pop-up you know, design company, right? They, they focus on pop-ups. Uh, but then you have uh, companies like Team Epiphany uh, that has a space in LA and, and New York. <clears throat> and I remember one of my favorite projects that they had was um, they recreated a set from Stranger Things inside this warehouse and it was an activation that was up for like a month but literally they built the house inside of a warehouse so it's like a house inside of a warehouse and it's a full-blown like it there's a, the whole set was there and you could walk into the house and it had all the different rooms and had all these different like cool creative things that you could do as a part of the experience uh cars bikes around i mean it was it was amazing and uh let me see who else is my favorite um 29 rooms i, I met Albie Alexander, the creative director from 29 Rooms. I met him a while back and uh, I, I love the way that he uh, gives direction and works with different artists to kind of create these immersive environments. And they were one of the first ones that really got the like Instagram rooms type of thing, you know, uh, the Instagram museum type of uh, concept really uh, off and running. But I think a lot of that um, that work, you know, for the past few years is starting to inform a lot of the work that you're seeing now and uh, then, you know, I met you and, you know, and now it's, it's out there into the world. You have 10 space, like, you know, 10 space just launched with a great project, but I would love for you to tell us a little bit about, about that. And tell us about even your, your vision for how you created this first uh, experience that's in 10 space. Yeah. So 10, 10 space is a dedicated space. And um, so it's interesting. We're, you know, sort of in the process of, um, not just showcasing the online brand that we're featuring in the space, but we're also trying to build a following for 10 space. So we're sort of building two brands at the same time, which is quite oh, yeah. an interesting challenge. Um, but 10 space really came out of um, just my own curiosity and desire to uh, rethink the shopping experience to sort of reimagine it. And as a consumer myself feeling again, sort of uninspired by what was going on in retail and also feeling like um, locally here with the, the large retailers that we have, um, seeing them struggle, and this happened, you know, started to happen way before COVID, but seeing them really, really struggle, seeing the department stores struggle, seeing a lot of closures across the country, I sort of just started to wonder, like, what is going on in retail? And um, how can we get involved, maybe even to, to try to, you know, at least contribute to that in some small way? And, um, and so I just started to think about, you know, well, if Tenfold did retail, what, what would it be like? And uh, for us, like I said, the, the, the thought behind that is, is, is pretty similar, but um, in terms of our methodology, but what I found as a consumer is that especially during COVID, I would, you know, scroll through my mobile feed and I would see all these brands that looked like they had great product, but I just had a desire to know who they were a little bit more. Um, know what they stood for, their purpose, their intention. Um, 
I wanted to know who I was doing business with. And in addition to that, wanted an opportunity to touch and feel the product. And so that's really where the, some of the inspiration came for 10 Space, which is to create this space where we would bring in an online brand every two months, really bring their story to life, um, create those experiences to create um, a much more intimate connection with the brand um, and allow those brands to achieve a, a lot of different things. So depending on what they're trying to achieve, whether it's consumer research or whether it's creating more followers or whether it's being exposed to a Midwest market that they're not currently in, um, or whether it's bringing in investors to see how, their, how cool their brand is and how it can live in the space, we're really sort of building and designing our shows around uh, reaching those objectives that, that, that the brands have for themselves. Um, so the first show is, uh, is Rudis. They're a sports apparel brand. They started as a, as a wrestling brand at heart and they've really sort of expanded into more uh, sports training apparel and athleisure and some you know, really appealing to a, a wider audience. And so in some ways the show is designed to test that. You know, can they, will they resonate outside of their target market or their core audience? And uh, it's, it's going extraordinarily well. Um, they're really happy. They're, they're seriously considering a brick and mortar strategy, um, which the CEO says is a testament uh, to the work. And uh, the social media impact is, is crazy. They've had a 34% lift in, uh, in Facebook and 18% lift in Instagram. Um, so we're, we're just two weeks in and we're trying to collect all the analytics and the data, but we're getting great conversion in the store. We're also getting obviously uh, phenomenal reach and great engagement with respect to, this, to the social channel. And I think that's sort of the sleeper with 10 Space. I've known that's sort of what the, the goal is, but it's, it's hard to get people to understand that it's, it's really a media platform more than anything. Um, it's a social content machine. And, um, and it's been really exciting to sort of watch this vision or dream, you know, come to reality. Yo, that is super dope. And you're right. It's like, um, it's, it's a hybrid of all of those things, right? Um, I've been looking at the content, you know, even if you haven't stepped into the store yet, you, you feel like you are experiencing what's happening in the store. I mean, you've been having different people there every day. You've been highlighting different releases, you know, and that's beyond what, what's interesting is that's beyond just the design of the space. That's like you said, it's content, right? And you're blending and that's, but, but again, that's because of your experience in marketing, your experience in strategy, you understand how to bring those both together and how they marry each other well. And then you're tracking the data, right? So yeah. you're looking at conversion and rates and looking at all of that stuff. And there's a lot of it too is anecdotal, which, you know, it's hard to measure, but I mean, we've had people tear up in the space. They get emotional. Um, the stories are really impactful. And, um, you know, I think that's, that those are going to be sticky memories that create these amazing bonds for the brand. They just are. We've had, I had someone say, this is better than church <laughs> to me, which was like a great compliment. Um, I will say the majority, the vast majority of people walk in, they sort of look around and their first question or the most popular question is, what is this? And I love that because to me, that says they're recognizing right away that this is not a store. This is more than that. This is something else. Um, and then the next thing they do is they take their phone out and they just start yeah. taking pictures or taking videos. So it's working. That's dope. That's dope. And it's great to track that. And uh, I'm going to circle back and talk to you about Columbus because I really feel like you know, the, the, even the point of why we're having this conversation is because I feel like Columbus is next up when it comes to this stuff uh, moving it forward. But you mentioned, you know, a few things, right? You mentioned the store design, you mentioned the, the content piece of it, you mentioned brand story and even analyzing it. So, so let me ask you this, right? Um, since this, this industry is growing, right? And we see a future in this industry, what are some of the essentials that you need to make a space feel complete? Or what are some of the essentials that you think you need to be successful in this emerging market? That's a great question. I mean, obviously one of the things that we're doing with 10 Space is we're treating it as our own very own lab. So it's super fun because there's sometimes things we wanna do with clients and we it's hard to get them to go on that journey sometimes. And so what 10 Space is for us is an opportunity to just like, if we have an idea, we wanna try it, we're trying it there. Um, so I think, you know, as we thought about designing 
10 space, we sort of thought about it in two pieces. One was, this is maybe a, a use case specific for what we were building, but we wanted to build in a flexible infrastructure to the design of the space itself that would facilitate, you know, all different types of things. So we're, we're integrating a lot of technology. So we have large LED displays in the space um, that obviously are, are, are easy to change. I and mean, those are things that just with creating new digital content, we can make the space feel really different. Um, one of those LEDs that we created actually pivots and moves so that we can create a completely different circulation path for any target audience. Um, and then we have a flexible lighting infrastructure. We have a, a grid system in the ceiling that's gonna allow us a lot of flexibility around hanging features. So we had that side of it. And then the other side of it is how to, how to customize that specific to the brand that you're trying to feature, to this experience that you're trying to create. Um, audio, you know, thinking of all of the senses. How do we create this multi-sensory experience because experiences aren't one dimensional? So thinking through sight, sound, touch, taste, we have a, a, a specific treat that we have featured for every show in the space, even if the brand is not a food and beverage brand. So really sort of thinking through a, a more holistic experience, I think is, is really important. Um, and then just thinking about not just what people are going to see in the space, this is sort of something we challenge ourselves with all the time. We'll ask, what are they gonna do? It's not just what they're gonna see, but what are they actually gonna do? How do we engage with people? And one of the things I'll say is that, um, you know, there's a lot to see and to read and to learn about, but the most impactful uh, experiences that we can create for consumers in the space is when they're actually physically engaged. In. And so, um, you know, finding opportunities, like we have a, a punching bag space where um, consumers can come in and pick out a sticker of their frustration from the last year and a half that can be and we have them pre-printed and you can pick a sticker and put it on the hanging bag and you can punch it out. You know, that's a memory that people are gonna take with them. They, they laugh, There's a, we have a punch tracker, you, you get a score. Um, it'll tell you how many punches that you punched and what your force was. And, um, and it, you feel great after doing that for 10 seconds. Um, and it's so, it's, it's something that engages people in their, in their mind and their, in their body and their heart. And, uh, and that was one way that we decided to feature some of the collections that Rudis has with Muhammad Ali and Rocky Balboa. So it was a really fun way to celebrate the merch and the collaboration, but engage with those visitors in an, in an activity and an action that's gonna be super memorable for them. Um, mostly because everyone's taking video of it, but again, in addition to that, just, you know, the physical engagement, I think will make a huge, huge difference. I cannot wait to get my hands on this bag. <laughs> I'm going to need all the stickers. I'm going to take all of them. I know, gonna, I know. A couple of combos out there. Right, right. Yeah, that people, is super fun. People have written their own um, as well. So we have the opportunity there, again, engaging with people on that level. It's like, hey, we have these 12 different stickers of all these different things from COVID to fear to injustice, discrimination, um, FOMO, and we have some really great ones, but um, you know, we had someone walk up, take one of the stickers and wrote voter suppression on it. And I was like, yes, like yeah. those are really heartwarming things for me. Um, and I just, I get such a kick out of just spending time there because um, it really fills my cup to see the work that we're doing really connect with people on that level. Yeah, that's, um, that's super inspiring because we know that you know, design before was designed for function. It wasn't really a design for uh, tapping into the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what is unique about that is because people, you know, and, you know, and the good thing is you're working with direct to consumer brands, right? And, and we know that direct to consumer brands, even that space is getting saturated, right? And how do you differentiate, you know, one product from the next when if you have a good looking website, it's, it feels like, oh, this is a quality product. But that's clearly not the case. And a lot of people find that out because returns are increasingly growing, right? Uh, people, they look at it, the website's really cool. But I think this is where the key of experiential design is going to take shape is that it's a way for you to differentiate your brand, right? But then when I show up, I don't want to show up just to show up and say, hey, I have a space, take us seriously. It's just like, 
you know, here's a chance for me to really connect with that audience. And I think with uh, with the emergence of, you know, globalization and being able to buy from any brand around the world digitally, I mean, we're buying through social media now, you know, we're not going to come to your store just because there's product in it. Like we really want to, you know, we probably already have established a relationship with you or we're looking to establish a relationship and I want to know the why, right? And so I think what you guys have done a good job is like finding out that why. And when you come in there, being able to tap into people's why, right? And, and through the product, right? So it's like, yeah, punch on his bag, but for your own reason, tap into that human spirit and, you know, use the equipment that is of quality that's that's associated with this brand. And then, you know, walk out with a Rocky t-shirt while you're at it. <laughs> it's converse. Yeah, yeah, right. Good for right. This. It's good. It's it's good for the human spirit, but it's it's also good for business. Yeah. So you know, I, I feel like to just recap what you said, it's like understanding. You know, um, there's a design element to it, right? And so when you're talking about the design element, you said there's design, there's the brand story part, there's the five senses, making sure you're covering that. You're not just thinking about what are people going to see, but what are they going to hear? What are they going to touch? What are they going to taste even, you know, um, what are they going to talk about, right? All of the senses. Um, so, but going back to the design portion of it, you know, you've built Tent Space uh, as a great flexible shell, right? And I think the, the experiential design, there are, I'm pretty sure, and you probably know more than I do, but there are starting to be some fundamental things that you can use to create flexibility, uh, whether that's lighting tracks or certain things, like you said, the use of technology, um, so when it comes to the design side, as you see, uh, this opportunity, you built this space for it. Um, what are some of the things you should pay attention to in that design so that you are creating flexible options for yourself or for your brands that you're working with? Um, or just, you know, what are some of those, those design elements that, you know, one should think about when they're designing a space? Um, I think that, you know, for us, a, a lot of it is, is really studying how we want people to move through the space and sort of how we want that story to unfold. So really looking at the circulation and the journey, but also knowing that you can get it wrong and, you know, people are going to sort of decide. It's like, it's like on a college campus where you have the sidewalks, that's where you're supposed to walk. But then there's like the part where the green grass is all worn down. Yeah. That's where everyone has decided to walk. Um, so that's been really interesting for us to think through. You know, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think actually just like critically of some of the things that, that, that you know, now that we're in, that we're sort of evaluating and looking at, I would yeah. say that's one of them. Like we might say, okay, we want people when they come in to sort of spill to the left and then go around counterclockwise. And that's sort of the flow of the space. And, um, and that's not necessarily the case at all. I also think there's an interesting balance between um, creating a space that's sort of open and welcoming, but you can also be so open that people feel insecure. Um, they sort of want some little nooks and crannies and as yeah. beings, we like a little bit of shelter, a little bit of structure. So I think getting that balance right is, is really important. Um, you know, small things like keeping your doors open versus your doors closed. I mean, it's all of these little cues that, that set the, the tone for what that experience is going to be like. Um, and then not to discount the human quality in all of this too. We have absolutely fabulous experience manager um, who's also building out our team. And a lot of the experience that's created at Ten Space is the experience of engaging with our team, and you know, being welcomed into the space. And um, there's a lot of self exploration that goes on, but there's also sort of a bit of a docent, almost like role for our team to really introduce people to this really brand new kind of different concept where they're just not quite sure, you know, what it's going to be like. So. I think thinking through all of those things is um, is very important. I know for us with respect to a temporary um, installation is that we want people to walk in and feel as though this is a permanent store. And I think we've been very successful in doing that. Um, every time you walk in, we want you to feel like the space has been completely transformed um, and that it, it feels permanent even though it's not. So 
finding materials that are easily removable. Um, when we go to um, decommission the space, we wanna be able to turn it quickly. I'll tell you one of my inspirations for that is if anyone has ever been to, um, which I know is a bucket list for a lot of people, Saturday Night Live, um, what they're able to do in one week is <laughs> mind blowing. Right. Because, you know, sometimes they're like working on scripts. They don't even know what set design is actually going to end up being approved for the show. But within one week, they're writing, a, they're writing a sketch and they're building these phenomenal set designs that, I mean, blow your mind. And they bring those in and out and they've, they've, they've conceived them, designed them, built them, and then, you know, fabricated them in less than a week. So whenever my team's like, oh my God, I don't know if we can do that. I'm like, we can do it. We can do it. If Saturday Night Live can do it, we okay. can do it. Right? They have right. set the bar and they have set the bar really high. So our goal is to decommission the space and turn it within about a week, week and a half. Um, we'll see, you know, we're, we're new at this. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I love that. I actually watched uh, I watched a couple specials on Saturday Night Live and they're like the, the background, like everybody in the background from the stylists to the set designers. And oh it, is, it is insane what they're able to create in a matter of days, right? They just get an idea and they're like, but you know, when you think about it, that they're used to doing it. There's, there's that flow, whoever created that flow, they're used to like, okay, boom, lights, you know, paint, you know, wigs, it's crazy. Yeah, and the only thing I'll tell you for the listeners, a lot of that work is all hand. So um, they're there because it's quicker. If they're sketching, they're sketching and they're they're editing. Um, they have a lot of drawing tables there. So you know, you might think it's it's all computerized the way that a lot of design is done today, but you know, it, it can't be a lost art and it can't be um, emphasized enough. Like your ability to communicate through drawing and sketching is, is really relevant and really important, especially today with how fast things are changing. Yeah, yeah, you don't wanna lose those skills, right? Those, okay. those, there, there are certain things that, uh, that, can't, that, that won't translate as well on computers, right? You definitely need 3D renderings and all that type of stuff, but you know, a good pen and a pad or a pencil and a sketch pad will do you some justice and help bring those ideas to life, you know, instantly, right? So I do, I do, I agree with you on there. Um, you kind of spoke to that too, and, and you had touched on some technology before. And, and like you said, the experience, there's the design side of it all, but then now, you know, it's really about being experience focused. So you said you have a great experience designer, experience manager that kind of helps bring those experiences to life inside the space so that it balances out well. You talked about technology too as well. I think uh, technology really, and what I've been seeing, like you said, even in, in Asia, what they're doing with uh, the, the, the panels that make make it look like there's water spilling out of the building or that a bull's about to run and jump out of this, you know, they're really using that to create these like 3D imagery. And so when you're looking at a, a, a temporary space and bringing that to life, you know, the incorporation of technology is definitely important. What are you seeing some of the, I mean, you've obviously have, are bringing some of the latest technology to spaces and we've seen it and, 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 and I mean, it's been awesome the way you integrate it. What are some of the other technologies uh, or the integration of technology used in ways that you feel are gonna be, continue to be used or grow in the future? Yeah, I think so. We're already starting. So our first goal was to get those, those LED displays up and running. And um, I will say that was one of my, points of stress this summer was supply chain issues. Again, like everyone's having coming out of China, it was like, is this actually going to happen? And it was like, well, we can't open without it. So our first goal was just to get those, those displays up and running and they, they are transformative as it relates to the, how the space feels and the environment based on the content that we're curating for those or that we're creating for those. But now we're starting to look at what else can we layer onto those? Now, how do we make those displays more interactive um, so, you know, in the space today, we do have some RSS feeds that will um, link social media to the displays in the space. So if people hashtag 10 space, we're able to curate that content and it's formatted really beautifully for our display. So people can feel connected. Um, they can feel like, hey, that's me, um, which, is, which is fun. But I think we're also looking to, especially for our next show, we're hoping to have some experiences that incorporate augmented reality. I think it's very possible that we could, you know, uh, have people try on, you know, just like you do with the, the, the apps in, in the mobile devices where you're trying on glasses from Warby Parker, 
Um, I think there's opportunities for us to do things that are more human scale. So our LED displays are, you know, 12 feet tall and, you know, six feet wide. So it becomes very immersive because of the scale is very immersive. And I think that's a really important part of what we do is that, you know, we don't want to just do something that you can do somewhere else. We want to make, make that experience unique. But part of what makes it unique is that by virtue of the scale being very human scale, it feels very immersive, immersive like you're there. So whether that means that you're gonna try on a blazer on the screen and have it be you know, this augmented reality experience uh, could be really cool. Um, so I think we're gonna start to play with, with some of those things as we, as we look to future shows. Um, we'd also like to continue to meld that in-person experience with a way to capture that and, and um, have that experience be shared through social media. Um, so you're delivering an experience to somebody else based on an experience that you had in the physical environment. The physical. I yeah. love that, I love that. So that, that kind of that leads me to my last question because I know we have some people here that probably want to ask some good questions. So um, where do you see it going, right? I think, you know, one of the things that we've kind of brought out about this conversation is, you know, um, being smart about how you design, uh, really looking at all the five senses, um, leveraging technology, building the experiences in it, um, all of that woven together, helping tell a brand story, right? And I feel yeah. like that's one of the key things is, is how are you going to experience this brand story in this space? And how is this brand really going to tap into you in this space? So it goes both ways. So what are some of the things that you see uh, coming in the near future or that you're excited about the future of just this industry, right? What are some of those things? Well, um, great question. I feel like we're on the edge. So I will tell you, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a challenge to pitch something really conceptual. So one of the things I'm really excited about is we now have a real show that we can demonstrate for people and and give people a, a better vision for what it is that we've been talking about for months. So um, the most visionary leaders are the ones that have said yes. So um, I'm excited to continue on that journey with you know, what we've set out to achieve with TenSpace. I think that some of what makes me really excited about it, and I think an important message for our listeners today is that experiential design is interdisciplinary. There's no way that this solution is achieved by just an interior design perspective or just a graphic design perspective or just a uh, digital animation perspective or a social uh, media or content strategist or, you know, um, it, it, it takes all of us. We're an event planner. Um, it takes all of those disciplines coming together and, uh, and production design, which is incredibly important for us, it takes all of those disciplines to come together and to work together and collaborate to deliver something as layered as what we're creating. Um, so to me, I think that's really exciting. Um, it's very reflective of the team that I've built, but I think it's really exciting for um, designers today and students today um, who are really excited about collaboration, who really want that as a part of their career path, um, true collaboration where, you know, the egos are put, put to the side um, to achieve something and um, that's really unique and really different. So I think the, the, the individuals and the firms that can do that are gonna be the ones that are gonna be able to succeed at this. Um, and, yeah. and I think it's interesting too, which this is a long, probably debate for another day, but with educational institutions about, you know, even within those disciplines, how many different technology environments everybody's living in. And so one of the challenges that we've had that I think we've done a great job of overcoming at Tenfold is uh, figuring out how to meld those together. You know, you've got your interior designers working in AutoCAD or Revit, you've got your graphic designers working in um, InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop, and you've got your animators working in a, a completely different software environment, right, designers right. working in SolidWorks, you know, it's like, how do we bring all of this together? Um, and I think that's a great challenge for 
uh, our educators at CCAD and for probably all of our listeners online. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I could see uh, in my mind, I see a blank space and I see a, a podium in the middle and I say, you put something on that podium and you bring all the people together and say, how do we design this space? You know what I mean? And see what happens out of that. I could, that could be a fun exercise. We might do that. Uh, listen, I feel like we could have talked like for, for hours and hours. This is really, this is my jam. I love this type of conversation. It really gets me excited about the future. I'm super excited about what 10 Space is going to do. Um, but I want to get, you know, we want to save some time for other questions. So Jesse's back to talk about uh, if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I have a question myself. I, I love hearing about how you're taking these brand experiences from online into a physical space, then they're being documented and put back online via social media, things like that. So it's just uh, this weaving into from online to physical space back to online. I think that's brilliant. Um, I, I do have a question about um, just hearing you talk about your process, Rachel, uh, with 10 Space. Um, just wondering what was something you that really stuck out for your inaugural um, brand launch in the space. What what was the big thing you learned that you know, like for sure we're going to apply this moving forward or is it just a building of <laughs> knowledge as you go? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I feel like I've been so like crazed and stressed and in it that I haven't had a whole lot of time to reflect. Um, I can just say personally speaking, it's been one of the hardest things I've ever, ever done in my life. Um, and, you know, when I started Tenfold, it was just me, myself and I, <laughs> behind closed doors somewhere, like, I'm starting a business. Um, I still felt that pressure, and it was a scary sort of step or leap of faith, but this is like on a whole other level. And I think that the reason that it is, is because it requires an entire, you know, team engagement from, from my team. It's very public facing. So it's something we had to promote and know that we were going live in front of the world. Um, it was very expensive. So I've invested a lot of my own money in it. Um, and yet at, having said all of that, like it was a magnetic pull that I really couldn't not do. Um, and so I would just encourage everyone that if you feel a passion for something that you, um, you lean into it and, you know, it'll test you and it'll challenge you, but you'll, it, it's incredibly rewarding, incredibly rewarding. And I knew, and I told the team early on, you know, we're not, we're not retail experts. Like this is, this is something new for us. We're going to skin our knees. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail forward. We're going to do all of those things. There's going to be curveballs thrown at us. Like, hey, there's power outages in China and, um, you know, your displays aren't going to make it on time. Um, you know, you have to find that resiliency and figure out how to, how to move forward and, and um, be successful. So anyway, those are just some of my own, I guess, personal reflections with it. And I think as far as <clears throat> the design is concerned, what's been really rewarding is that all of our sort of theories or ideas about how this should work and whether it would connect and resonate with consumers is proving to be very true. So that's been really fun. It's always good. It's always good when you get to see the vision come to life and what you think, right? Because you go into it, you know, when you're when you're creating something new, you go into it and you know in your mind you see what it will you see the vision for it, but it's super hard to really realize that. And you the journey is the story, right? But then when you see it and you see what you intended to happen happen but beyond that there's other things that you start to see to happen too it's really rewarding in that so congratulations for taking that risk i'll just say that thank you and it's hard like i was saying before there's people that don't see it and it's hard when you when you have a strong vision and you are struggling to get other people to see it and i will tell you and i don't know if we're if we're ending here but I've had, for those of you who have watched Pretty Woman, I've had the, that Pretty Woman moment where she's holding all the shopping bags and she's looking at him, she's like, big mistake, big, huge, you know, for, for the ones who sort of maybe didn't say yes, but they, they didn't say no, but they didn't say yes. You know, they just, well, Columbus, I don't know, you know, I, you know, whatever. It's just like, we'll show you. Okay, show you. right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Um, let's see if we have any uh, other questions from anyone in the uh, audience. 
You can put your questions in the Q&A. We'll check those out. I know I have one. So, uh, you know, uh, first of all, I'm looking, I'm, I'm super excited to, to see if there's any opportunity for us to work together in the future. But um, what are some of the, you know, I don't know, you probably can't tell us and we all want to wait. We want to see what it unfolds, but what are, uh, are there anything you can give us hints to is where 10 space will expand to and, and what, what, yeah, where will it venture off to over the next, you know, year or two? Well, we, d we definitely want to learn, right? So we don't want to, we don't want to necessarily grow. There's been talk about, like, I'll, I'll just share, you know, there's a, a, a really well-respected um, development company out of Atlanta that's already reached out proactively and said, we absolutely love this concept. We want you to come to Atlanta. We'll build out the space for you. Like, we'll invest in, like, you won't even have to do that. And that's really intriguing and exciting. And, 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 and I think future vision-wise, if we can, you know, perfect this and, and feel really good about it. We'd love to see it expand to some other markets. I think there could be some really cool cross-functional events that go on. So like through technology, could we connect to the 10 space in Atlanta and, you know, create something that's going on there in New York, whatever, like, so, you know, brands could have like a really big splash in multiple areas of the country at the same time. And we could create some really unique experiences related to that. I think that could be really cool. Um, I will say we're, we're very focused on, on different types of um, brands in the space. So be looking for, for um, not just, so obviously we just did apparel, but be looking for home, um, food and beverage, health and beauty. I mean, we're gonna try to hit all the categories. Our show for November, December is gonna be magical for the holidays, of course it needs to be. And we've got a great brand. <clears throat> that we're featuring for that and we'll have some I'll, I'll give you a little a little hint to we'll, we'll have some really great gifting items so um, I think it'll be a great spot to uh, to engage in some gifts for others during the holidays um, you know I had a meeting with uh, with SJP collection Sarah Jessica Parker you know she's she's gonna be I mean she already is sort of like back on the map with the new episode the new the new series rather um and just like that the, the follow-up to sex in the city so and I think our timing is really interesting on that and she she um we did not meet her directly we presented to their COO but she has seen our our deck and has been pitched and she's very very interested and um that's super exciting it would be fun to have an Ohio native you know come to Columbus for a really cool uh cool show at some point in time like can't promise that that's going to happen but you know again it's it's looking really yeah. uh really positive yeah 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 now this is awesome uh again i think it's super exciting that when uh you put that energy out there and you and you see what comes back you know it's often surprising what you can open up and you are creating a new lane and so thank you for keeping pushing the envelope forward here in this city and I'm going to end it off with that, too. I believe that Columbus, as a test city, as a retail city, as a fashion city, as a place where things are created, I think we have a ton of opportunity to continue to, to grow in this space. And I think the individuals that are on this call are part of that, that new wave of people who are going to be inspired by you and who, you know, you never know who may be end up working for you or something like that in the future. But I think we have a huge opportunity in Columbus to push the envelope forward of what is the future of retail design. So thank you for inspiring many people before and, uh, and after you uh, with what you're doing. And I can't wait to keep on jamming out with you over this. And hopefully uh, many people will see many great things coming from you. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. all that you do as well. And uh, I'm super excited to figure out what a collaboration could look like at some point in time here. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. Whatever it is, it's going to be dope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you both uh, for your time today. Um, this has been an awesome conversation. I've loved hearing you guys talk about all the things. So many ideas coming to mind. Um, I really appreciate you being here. We're getting a lot of great um, comments in the chat section from our attendees. Thank you all for being here. Um, I just want to say really quick before we uh, go, if today's talk resonated with you and you want to learn more about how you can be one of the leaders who will shape the future of retail, check out our CCAD's Master of Professional Studies in Retail Design. This new first of its kind program, which is enrolling now with its first cohort for January 2022, 
was shaped by leaders like Yogi who are part of this of our advisory board. And lastly, if you enjoyed today's lecture and want to share it with a friend who wasn't able to attend, we'll have a recording available very soon on ccd.edu forward slash MPS retail. Um, and finally, be sure to stay connected with CCAD by following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day. Plug. Shameless plug at 10 space. We need followers. We, yeah, want, I put, <laughs> we want great brands to come to Columbus. The first thing they're going to do is say, you know, how many followers do you have? So um, follow us. We'll give you stickers, all kinds of things. Come in and visit us. Come come to 10 Space in the Short North. We'd love, love, love to host you. Totally. We put the uh, link to the website on, in the chat as well. So thanks. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.